Alright, hey guys, what's up? It's another Monday, and you guys know what that means. It's it's Murderous Mondays, where I talk about a a serial killer every Monday. Uh, and the next serial killer, um, uh, if you guys have seen my last video, I gave hints at the end. We we will be talking about Danny Rowling. Who was he? What was his early life like? And why and how did he become so evil? I will answer that and more in this video as I take you down the perspective mind of a serial killer. Now, last video, I... See, now last video, I had music on in the background, but... Um, the people who watched my video said that they didn't hear any music, so I'm not going to put any music on. And it came to my attention that last week the title was, I put the story of a cold and calculus serial killer. It's, no, it's cold and calculated. Calculus is a type of math. So, yeah. So, anyway, here we go. We're going to be talking about Danny Rowling. Anyway, so, Daniel Har Harold Rowling, born May 26th, 1954, to October 25th, 2006, was a cold and calculated serial killer known as the Gainesville Ripper, who murdered five students in Gainesville, Florida. Just over a, about a week's time, not even, in August of 1990. Uh, he later confessed uh, to raping several of his victims, committing a triple homicide in his home city of Shreveport, Louisiana, and attempted to murder his father in 1990. Even though he killed... A total number of eight people, he was sentenced to the to death for the five and Gainesville murders in 94. Well, in 1990, I'm sorry, I'm... In 1990. And he was executed by lethal injection in 2006. Now, um... Before we get into um his early life and stuff, he is uh like you guys heard of uh right Ghostface right the guy from the Scream movies right the right right well he is the real life Ghostface. He would always wear um. Like, the ghost face, like, masks and stuff. And if you guys hear stuff in the background, um, plumbers are here, because the sink is broken. So, early life. Daniel, or Danny Rowling, was one of two sons born to James Harold Rowling and Claudia Beatrice Rowling, probably. Yeah, James was a Korean War veteran in the U.S. Navy, and a Shreveport police officer. He often abused his wife and sons for the silly little stupid things, such as breathing in a way that displeased him. Which, I would not last long in that house. He also told Danny that he was unwanted from birth. Which is... Pretty sad if, if 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 you think about it. In one incident, Rowling's mother went to the hospital after claiming her husband tried to make her cut herself with a razor blade. She made repeated attempts to leave him, but always returned to him shortly after. James once pinned Danny to the ground, handcuffed him and had police take his son away because he was embarrassed by him. 
And I remember, they could actually do that because remember, uh, he was a police officer himself. A third occurrence occurred when Danny had a dog, but James beat him up so bad that it died in his son's arms. So, so he was subjected to a lot of messed up stuff. As a teenager and a young adult, Rowling was arrested several times for robberies in Georgia and Alabama. And he was also caught spying on a woman getting dressed. And as an adult, he had trouble grasping society and holding down a steady job. And at one point, uh, one point though, Danny worked as a waiter in Pancho's restaurant in Bozier or Bozier or Bossier City, Louisiana. Now, before we go any further, um, if if you guys do not want to hear about decapitation and stabbing. I I would say leave this video. Alright. Alright, so hey, here we go. The Gainesville Murders. In August 1990, he camped out in the woods near campus and rolling murdered five students. One in Santa Fe College, which not, uh, New Mexico, but, like, I want to say, uh, probably in, in, in Florida somewhere. And four from the University of Florida. He mutilated his victims' bodies, and this is where I'm saying, even decapitating one of them. In the early morning hours... Of August 24th, 1990, Rowling broke into an apartment shared by two university freshmen students, 18-year-old Sandra Larson and 17-year-old Christina Powell. Finding Powell asleep on the downstairs couch, he stood over her briefly with, without waking her up, and instead went upstairs to the bedroom where Sanja was also sleeping. Rowling murdered Sanja first, taping her mouth shut to muffle her screams. Stifle her screams or whatever. And then stabbed her to death with a kabar knife. After Sanja was dead, Danny then went back downstairs, taped Christina's mouth shut, bound her wrists together behind her back and threatened her with the knife as he cut her clothes off. Oh, we'll also be talking about rape. If, if, if you guys don't want to hear about that, leave, please. All right. All right. Then he raped her and forced her face down on the floor and stabbed her five times in the back, before leaving Danny, posed the bodies in a sexual position, and then took a shower. Alright, then a day later, on August 25th, 1990, uh, Rowling broke into the apartment... into an apartment of 18-year-old chemistry honor student Krista Hoyt, who lived nearby to the Santa Fe College. He pried open a sliding door with a screwdriver to find that she wasn't home. He waited for her to come home, and at 11 a.m. she came home, which I think they made him... Made a mistake there. It might have been 11 p.m. probably. Because. Um. I had. No one in their right mind would want to. Uh. Murder. Someone in the. In, in the. In, in the daylight. But also you know. Uh, he wasn't in his right mind so. But anyway. 
Hoyt entered her apartment and was surprised by Rowling, who put her in a chokehold. After she had been subdued, subdued, he used duct tape to gag her mouth and bind her wrists together behind her back. He led her into the bedroom where he cut off the clothes from the body and raped her, just like the Christina Powell murder. And she and forced Christ Krista to lie face down on the bed and stabbed her back, uh, rupturing her aorta. He then flipped her body over and sliced her abdomen. Abdom her stomach. Abdomen. Abdomen. Abdomen, sorry. Abdomen. Alright, yeah. yeah. Slice her abdomen open from pubic bone to breastbone. After arriving back to his campsite, now remember, he camped out right next to the Gainesville um, uh, campus in, in the woods. Uh, Roland could not find his wallet. Thinking that he may have lost it at the murder scene, he returned there at this, and, and this time he decapitated her. He posed her body in a sitting position at the edge of her bed and placed her head on a shelf facing the corpse. He later claimed his intent was to add shock to anyone who discovered her. And by this point, the murders had attracted widespread media attention. Many students had begun taking extra precautions, such as changing their daily routines and sleeping together in groups. Since the killing spree happened so early in the fall semester, some students even withdrew their enrollment and transferred to other schools. Right, then Tracy Pauls, who was a 23-year-old, li was living with her roommate Manny Taboda, who was also 23. And on August 27, 1990, Rowling broke into their apartment by prying open their sliding glass door with the same screwdriver that he previously used to break in. Well, I don't know if it was the same screwdriver, but the same tactic, right? He pried open the door with a screwdriver, nonetheless. Rolling man, oh, Rolling found Manny asleep in one of the bedrooms and killed him. Uh, but Manny put up a struggle, but eventually he lost his life. Alright. Hearing the commotion, Tracy went down the hall to Manny's bedroom and saw Rolling. She attempted to barricade herself in her room, but Rolling broke through the door. Here's Rolling. <sighs> nah, it's not really supposed to be uh, funny, but yeah. He taped her mouth and wrists, cut off her clothes, and raped her before turning her over and stabbed her three times in the back. Before he left, he posed Tracy's body, but left Manny the sa in the same position which he had died in. And with the exception of Manny, all of his victims were petite white brunettes with brown eyes like his mother. But then, we, we would soon find out later that he actually married another guy. Well, another male. Law enforcement had very few leads, but were able to identify a suspect known as Edward Lewis Humphrey. Edward was a University of Florida student who had a history of mental illness. Humphrey was arrested after a physical altercation which, with his grandmother, 
held in and and he was held in custody for five months. The grandmother later passed away, but a grand jury released Edward due to lack of sufficient evidence. All right, three port murders and tip about rolling. Now here is where the other murders come in, not of the not of the college students. Excuse me. I guess this tip fell flat. Um see so um the Shriftport murders happened before um the Gainesville murders. And well I guess this tip fell flat because if it wasn't, he'd probably be in jail and never have killed the five college students. Louisiana police alerted Florida authorities to an unsolved triple murder in Shreveport on November 4th, 1989. So, this was in November of 89, of 1989, right? And, and the Gainesville murders were in August of 1990. Detectives noted that there were similarities between the Gainesville murders and these three murders. Fifth, actually, it was actually three men that he murdered. 55-year-old Tom Grissom, his 24-year-old daughter Julie, and his grandson, 8-year-old Sean. Alright, so those two guys, right? The grandfather, grandson, and May Tabota. Those were the three... Guys, but he murdered five women. Uh, the family had been attacked in their home, and as they were preparing to have dinner, afterwards, Julie's body had been mutilated, cleaned, and posed, and she probably was posed like like the other females that he murdered on the campus. Then Don Maines, an investigator on the case with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, he traveled to Shreveport in November of 1990 because of the similarities between these murders and the Gainesville murders. Well, one year too late, buddy. Uh, the similarities included uh, posing the victims, a uh, tape residue of victims' bodies, and vinegar to clean the bodies. Don said that they tested the bodily fluids from the perpetrator and Shreveport and found that this person also had type B blood. Shortly after Don's trip to Shreveport, a Shreveport resident, Cindy... Juracic called Crime Stoppers and reported that Danny Rowling was possibly connected to the murder of in, in both cities. Three months earlier, in August of 1990, Juracic heard a news report about a string of murders as she traveled through the Florida Panhandle, which is, I guess, a place in Florida. Almost like the Everglades, I'm guessing. Um, the report made her think about Rowling, who she'd met at her Louisiana hometown church, and his possible link to these three other Shreveport murders. Cindy said that Rowling had said deeply disturbing things to both her and her then-husband, Stephen Dobin, Dobbin, Rowling said he'd come over every night for a while, and then one night Stephen comes in and said, and he said he's got to go. She also said that Dob that Dobbin told her that Rowling had a problem that he likes to stick knives into people. Cindy said that she dismissed these comments. 
when she heard about them because she didn't want to believe that Roland could be responsible for the murders in Shreveport. News of the Gainesville murders haunted Cindy so much that she contacted the police in November based on her hunch that Roland was that Rolling connection that Rolling had a connection to both murder but to the murders in both cities. He goes, it will not wait, she said, it will not let me rest. I called Crime Stoppers and I think there is one guy y'all need to investigate, Danny Rowling, she said. Investigators responded to the tip and quickly found Rowling, who had been arrested in September 1990 after another incident where, after robbing a supermarket in Ocala, Florida. The robbery had been committed 10 days after the bodies of Tracy Pauls and Manny Tabota were found. Rowling was being held in the Marion County Jail, 40 miles away from, from Gainesville. And now I'm sorry if I uh, uh, slur my speech or whatever, or, or like take a minute to process or something. I, 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 I stutter. So... All right. Investigators determined that Rowling had Type B blood, just like the suspect in both Gainesville and the Shreveport murders. So there's even more um, clues to depict or detect or whatever that that he the that's Danny Rawlings. Danny Rawlings. I, I think it makes more sense, Danny Rawlings, than Rawlings. Rawlings. Maybe because I'm getting mixed up with Seth Rollins. I don't know why. Um, okay, okay, he's a wrestler, so yeah, another wrestler, so uh, yeah. Um, there was also a bank robbery that occurred the same day that Krista Hoyt's uh body was found, and Florida investigators are thinking maybe whoever murdered the college students in. And in Shreveport, could also be responsible for these crimes as well. Bingo! The investigators went to a locker and to and to where they found a gun, a screwdriver, which you probably used to pry open the doors, bag of money, and a cassette player were all found. And they listened to the tape. Now remember, Rowling hid in the woods near the Gainesville campus where the students were living. Well, investigators found audio diaries alluding to his crimes. It was later discovered that on August 5th, 1990, Rowling broke into a home of Janet, or uh, no, Jeanette, no, Janet, Janet, yeah. Of Janet Frake in Sarasota, Florida, where he bound and gagged her with duct tape while sexually assaulted her but did not kill her. He spared her life. Which I don't know why. Alright, charges, trial, and execution. In November 1991, Rowling was charged with five counts of murder. I'm assuming the five counts of of uh, the of the college students. Uh, he was brought to trial nearly four years after the murders. He claimed his motive was to become a superstar. Was to quote superstar similar similar to Ted Bundy. In 1994, before his trial could get underway, Rowling unexpectedly pleaded guilty to all charges. Excuse me, to all charges of murders, and subsequently, state attorney Rod Smith presented the penalty phase of prox of prosecution. 
All right. During his trial, Court TV conducted an interview with Rowling's mother from her home, and his father could be heard shouting off camera. And on April 20th, 1994, Danny Rowling was sentenced to death. I just spit at the camera. Rowling was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and paraphilia. But shortly before he was executed in Florida for the killings in... Uh, Rowling claimed responsibility for the Shreveport's... Wait. Alright, alright, yeah. Shortly before he was executed in Florida for the killings in Gainesville, Rowling claimed to responsibility for the Shreveport murders by handing his spiritual advisor, Mike Hudspeth, and Florida police a handwritten confession and apology. Yeah, like, that's gonna bring them back to life. And get him out of the death penalty. Rowling was executed by lethal injection at Florida State Prison on October 25th, 2006, after the U.S. Supreme Court rejected a, a last-ditch appeal. Alright, now we can't forget the victims in today's case. Uh, Sean Grissom, who was just eight years old, and his mother, Julie Grissom, and her father, Tom Grissom, that were in Shreveport. Also the five make also the five main victims in this case Christina Powell, Sandra Larson, uh Krista Hoyt, Manny Tabota, and Tracy Pauls. Even Janet Frank, who he sexually assaulted but spared her life. And to never forget the five innocent college student victims, they built a shrine Dedicating their lives on campus. And that's basically all about what happened with uh, the Gainesville Ripper, uh, the real life ghost face, uh, Danny Rowling. Uh, and now. Next week, we will just kind of find where it was, so I can, okay, here we go. Next, we will talk about, well, next week, we will talk about, um, I'll give you a hint. Uh, I gotta see, see which one I want out of. Uh, I already did it wrong. Okay. Okay. Alright. Alright. He. All right, this guy, who so he passed away, uh, I want to say 29, no, 2020 or 2021 due to COVID, I think. Before he could get on his way with his trial, he passed away due to COVID, all right? Um, what else? Um, uh, okay. He... Was on a show where he, I, I know everyone probably know this, but he was on a game show uh, where he uh, said that his job was a photographer.
in the midst of his killing spree. Alright, now, that's the hints. Uh, now, do you, now, can you think of the guy that I just talked about, about the hints? And if so, please, uh, comment them if, 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 if the comments are turned on. I don't know why, they're sometimes not. Um, uh, turn the comments on. Who do you think this game show killer is? And I'll catch you guys on my next video. Peace.